good evening with your Friday edition of Sports Night. I'm Anne-Marie Burke. Now we begin with cricket. We're at lunch on day two. New Zealand are 181 for three in the first test against the West Indies in Wellington. The Kiwis resumed day two on 85 for two and were leading by 47 runs. Ross Taylor is on 66 as yesterday on day one. The West Indies struggled in the conditions as they were bowled out for 134 in just 45.4 overs. They lost 10 wickets for 75 runs after being 59 without loss. Kiran Powell top scored a 42, while left arm pacer Neil Wagner had the impressive figures of 7 for 39. Now let's take a look at those highlights. Nice. Very nicely driven. Little hand on it from Matt Henry. Not sure it's going to be enough. It's not. First boundary of the test match and of the morning. No second guessing there, though. That was a half volley on league stump, and it got the treatment. Nice drive, and it's through. Dive from Wagner. Not effective. Down to the boundary for four. And it's happened again, very similar, nice and full from Henry, but he's punched it down the ground for another four. In the air, but straight over top of the keeper, and down to the boundary for four. No, six in fact, gone all the way. There, right there, right there, that's the method. That's a glorious shot, and we've seen plenty of those this morning from Tail in particular. That Oh, flicked away. That's a gorgeous shot as well. Oh, yes, it carries through, does it? Oh, he plays his shots, this guy. He's going to be good to watch. Hitmeyer. Oh, another one. Oh, oh, behind, behind. The New Zealanders are very keen. And the batsman walks. Oh, trouble, trouble, trouble. I heard a bad noise. I heard a very, very bad noise if I'm a batsman. The tinkle of stumps and bales hitting the ground. I think he stood on his stumps here. Nicely worked leg side on that occasion. Oh, out, 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 out. Another one goes to the shorter one in the trap. Bowler, what have you done? Nearly a brilliant catch. Chance for a run out of your hats, and he does! Bowling straight through. For 134. Crunched away behind point. Beautiful shot. Over the top of the man stationed to backward square leg. That's a beautiful exhibition from Raval. In the air, flashing away this time. It's more of an uppercut. And there we go. He gets his reward and deserves it too. Tom Latham this time with the lazy stroke. Chance and taken. The West Indies have got a double breakthrough. This time he gets it away. Similar shot to Williamson. Oh, awkward. That'll give Ross Taylor to think something to think about overnight time says rod tucker now live coverage is on mctv's flow sports channel ghana jaguars were 184 for all 57 overs in reply to a first in his total of 294 but icbl barbados pried at the close of play on the second day of their fifth round match in the digital regional first class championship at the providence ground in guyana shanda paul hermraj has top scored so far with 79 Barbados Price started the day on 282 for 7 off 91 overs after wet conditions caused by overnight rain wiped out play in the first session. Graves top scored with 72 after he failed to add his overnight score. Fast bowler Kimo Paul was the leading wicket taker with 5 for 59. Meanwhile, at the Warner Park in St. Kitts, Trinidad and Tobago Red Force, they were bowled up for 360 to lead by 153 in reply to the Leeward Islands' first inning score of 207. Amir Jagu has top scored with 96, while Kyle Hope and Imran Khan made 84. The Leewards in their second innings are 53 without loss, meaning they trail by 100 runs. 
And at Sabina Park in Jamaica, the Windward Island Volcanoes have bounced back, picking up some key wickets against the Jamaica Scorpions following their first inning score of 200. Scorpions in reply are 261 for 8, leading by just 61 runs. John Campbell has so far top scored of 72, while Shane Shillingford has 5 for 72. Now to football, neighbours Spain and Portugal will meet at next year's FIFA World Cup after being drawn in the same group during today's draw in Moscow. If there's a group of death, then it's Group B, which sees 2010 winners Spain and current European champions Portugal, drawn with Morocco and Iran, who are managed by Portuguese Carlos Queiroz. The Portugal captain Cristiano Ronaldo plays with several of Spain's players for Real Madrid and has been managed by Queiroz with Portugal, meaning that this group will be fairly familiar with each other. Champions Germany are in Group F with Mexico, Sweden and South Korea. Now, the opening game of the World Cup will see host Russia take on Saudi Arabia in Group A and that's on June the 14th. Now we take a break but coming up the quarterfinals in Inter-Parish Road Tennis. Because there is... is celebrating its 7th anniversary Friday, December 15, 2017 9am to 8pm 27% store-wide sale free fruits and vegetables free health checks blood pressure blood sugar cholesterol free gifts refreshments and entertainment Carl's and Pan Issachar Dancers Kian Walters Krista J. Paul The Amaze 18-foot dancing Arjunine Man and much more Thanks for your patronage Have a very happy Christmas and a blessed and prosperous new year from Amaze 12 and 13 Harvest Plaza Oysons Christchurch Barbados Telephone 2 Four six four two zero seven eight zero nine. I don't care. He look real bad. I thought he had his. I'm scared. It's just so hard to accept. Don't be afraid. Is she mad of all? It doesn't matter, mommy. I love you. You can't play with me. You can't get it so. You can still talk with her. I will be there for you. No matter what, I'm still your dad. Fight it, not me. Community Files The Eagle Hall Post Office has reopened for business following recent renovations. Opening hours are Mondays, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. and Tuesdays to Fridays, 8 a.m. to 3.15 p.m. Peoples. Peoples. We're doing a mouth finger here today. This is CBC Standard Carry On Key. And it's 7.30 every Saturday from now until January. Don't miss it, people. Don't miss it, people. Great prizes, so come on out and be part of it. The CBC Standard Carry Your Own Key competition is brought to you with the compliments of Ace Pharmacy, Lucky Horseshoe, Day's Bookstore, Diamonds International, and Standard Distributors, where quality is a lifestyle. Come and be a part of it. Anybody can come. Bring your children. Bring the family. Come on down. And welcome back to Sports Night. Now, Silver Hill was the venue where the last quarterfinal matches of the National Sports Council's island-wide road tennis competition was held. The highlights of the night came in the Masters category. St. Lucie got the better of Christchurch after the game was forced into sudden death. Anthony Simmons of St. Lucie was beaten by Terence Prescott in the first game, while Dighton Roche leveled it up, beating Winslow Burkett. Then in the decider, Simmons beat Burkett to allow St. Lucie to move on to the semis. CBC's Akeem Plinkett takes a look at some of the other games. Women's action, Susan Scatterbury of St. Michael versus Abigail Haynes of St. Joseph as Scatterbury meets the net. Scatterbury replied immediately, beating Haynes with a forceful backhand push. But Haynes would still take the first, winning 21-10. Switch of size and Haynes was in a hurry to close up the game but goes long with the smash. But she corrected that mistake bringing the soft touch with the backhand. Joseph no chance at reply. Haynes then manipulates the ball cross court to take the set 21-9 and the game two sets to nil. Next up B category action. Matthew Grisette of St. Michael in the near court versus St. Phillips Ryan Hall. Grisette with the cross court shot. Hall the net. Hall, reminded that this is a knockout stage, doesn't take any chances, smashing Grisette's return. 
Rosette back again and defies Hall, going cross court to take the set 21 19. Hall tied up the game, winning the second 21 16. So we pick back up in the third with Grosette producing the sweeping passing shot. Grosette in control then brings finesse while Hall loses his composure. Forearm pressure again. Grosette dominates Hall to take the set 21 18 and the game two sets to one. More B-category action as Alexander Clark of St. Philip in the far court stands and delivers versus Darius Yaskin of St. Michael. Yaskin, a patient campaigner, did the basics and put the ball on the court, leaving Clark to make the mistakes as he goes wide this time. Yaskin then stamped his authority, taking the set 21-14 with a mighty cross-court shot. Clark's reply going wide again. In the second, Clark was back with a vengeance, setting up the shot to go diagonally for the point. Clark then shows his class, bringing the defiant backhand shot, which leaves Gaskin wanting. Clark, showing he's still in the game, produces the wicked passing shot, taking the set 21-16. In the third, Clark picked up where he left off, bringing the smash. Gaskin's reply, short. But he got a bit complacent, and instead of capitalizing on this smash, he meets the woodwork. Gaskin then forces another unforced error from Clark to take the set 21-14 and the game two sets to one. Akeem Klinkit, CBC Sports. Now Dan Johnson is a provisional winner of the 2017 Barbados Association of Dragsters and Drifters season after rain brought a premature end to the Launch Control 4 event recently at Bushy Park. Johnson in a Westfield megawatt leads the standings with 354 points. He's followed by Anthony Mears with 337 while Dwayne Brown is third on 309. The judges will have a meeting this week to confirm the winner. Now before the rains came, the drifters hit the track as Marlon Bell in the Nissan Skyline, Javon White in the Atsu Charmont and Fabian Holder in the Toyota Cressida all gave the patrons something to cheer about, taking the corners with speed and using their handbrakes around the Bushy Park course. Meanwhile in the drag section, rains cancel out any eventual winners. But Robert Bishop in a Nissan Skyline was the fastest in qualifying with 6.82 seconds. He was followed by Barry Jokes and Matthew DMZ Ford, both in Mitsubishi Evolution 3s in 6.935 seconds. While Dwayne Eiffel in a Mitsubishi Colt rounded out the top three in a time of 7.146 seconds. Over to basketball now, LeBron James took command of a challenging defensive assignment to see the Cleveland Cavaliers to their 10th straight victory, 121-114 over the Atlanta Hawks last night. James had 24 points and 12 assists, and Kevin Love finished with 25 points and 16 rebounds to help Cleveland hold off Atlanta to extend the NBA's longest active winning streak. James also passed Alex English for 10th place in the NBA's career scoring list. And welcome back to Sports Night. Now, weightlifting had its time in the spotlight recently as part of the BOA Independence Games. It was a battle amongst the best of the island as the Barbados Weightlifting Association hosted the Phillips and Springer Classic at the St. George Secondary School. Zagora Calendar won the youth category for females, while Jaden Foy was the best among the males. In the juniors, Crystal Chanderban of Guyana secured first spot and William Brace in the boys. Then in the masters, Kim Seeley and Dion Nurse were the top finishers in the female and male categories after the snatch and clean and jerk. CBC's Damien Best reports. Well, only the strong will survive in this type of competition, the Phillips and Springer Classic, part of the Independence Games. Let's start with the showstopper in the ladies' section, Olympian Lucy Peters of the Cook Islands. The 24-year-old showing that 90 and 95 kg was nothing. And then going on for the big lift at 100 kg, not able to lock the arms and that will do it for her third and final attempt. Good effort. Yeah. Well, Peters would mean. return in the clean and jerk to be successful in this movement. The lifter moves the barbell from the floor to a rack position across the deltoids. And then in the jerk portion, the barbell goes to a stationary position above the head, finishing with straight arms and legs. Peters makes the 110 kg look like nothing. 
Moving on now to the men. This is the snatch. The objective here, lifting the barbell from the ground to overhead in one continuous motion. Second in the senior section was Russell Grant of Barbados. Here he is attempting 120 kg. Grant, one of the reigning CrossFit champions in Barbados, gets locked in. Rate for it. Down and up. Done deal. However, the best in that same weight class was national competitor Ivorne McNee. After failing on his first attempt at 145 kg, McNee made no mistake on his third. Started to fade away, but that's big weight. He regains control, stays on the mat, beast mode. He accumulated overall 356.486 points. A look at some of the other categories. Mario Ford of Barbados judged the best senior in his weight category. After failing at 120, he made the ball move to snatch 122. Outstanding. He would go on to rack up the most points, tallying 284 after the clean and jerk. Well, Brian Best, he upped the ante in the snatch with a lift of 125. All about the technique, the key to everything. Leg and arm power on display. What a performance. However, a bit later on, he would fail at 160 in the clean and jerk, while Ford was successful at 162 kg. Best tally, 333.261. Damien Best, CBC Sports. Now here's what's going on this weekend. The final series of the BCA Elite Division ends with days two and three over the next two days. The games being leaders UWA against St. Catherine at 3W's Oval and second place Empire versus Wildey at the Polytechnic. All matches start at 12 p.m. The Run Barbados 10K starts at 4.45 p.m. at the Bay Street Esplanade, followed by the Marathon and Half Marathon at 5 a.m. on Sunday. Also on Sunday, the under-18 basketball three-on-three -three national qualifiers they're from 3 p.m. in Clapham. And the David Thompson Memorial Football Classic semi-finals there at Gall Hill St. John. It'll be St. Andrew versus St. Michael West at 6 p.m. Then St. George South against St. Thomas at 8 p.m. Now that's Sports Night for another week. Check us for more sports this weekend during the evening news. But from Monday, it'll be back to the long version of Sports Night. I'm Anne-Marie Burke. Do enjoy your weekend. CBC TV 8 in beautiful Barbados.